Hello, and uh, thank you for watching the videos of Open Air Outreach. I'm Jesse Morrell, and I started this ministry about five years ago. Uh, when I had got uh, born again and uh, saved through the blood of Christ, uh, I looked around the world and looked around in my community and amongst all my friends and saw a lot of people were not saved, that a lot of people were in sin and heading for hell just as I was. So I started witnessing however I could, talking to people, giving out gospel literature, gospel tracts, and and even started uh, preaching open air at park stops and just cussing busy like people and preaching. So the really mark lost people of our generation. How we are as Christians responsible for this generation of lost people. So he's uh, called me to preach the gospel all over the country and all over uh, on college campuses, uh, even all over the world. So that's what I do uh, full time. I went. Uh, full-time about a year ago on these universities and it's here at these universities where you, you do have the future leaders of the world these are going to be the future politicians and the journalists and the uh, uh, presidents and the businessmen uh, these are the future leaders of America and of the world because other countries will send their uh, their students to our universities so we go to these campuses and find the free speech area and it's typically in front of the student union building and around 11 o'clock or 12 o'clock, we lift our voices, as the Bible says, as a trumpet. And we publicly confront sin, telling people about their transgressions and of their need of the Savior. And we notice that when we do this, when he publicly confronts sin, it startles them, it grabs their attention. And they will come and to listen to the preaching, even five hours, six hours, seven hours in one single day. And sometimes they will come back the next day if we're there uh, for two days, three days, even up to a week. And we'll see the same people at the, at the meetings all week long. And I sometimes wonder, uh, when was the last time they watched a five-hour movie? Uh, and even more than that, when was the last time they watched a five-hour movie five days in a row? And I believe that's the help of the Holy Spirit to draw people onto Him, to have them come as we're preaching the gospel and, and confronting sin and rebuking sin and reasoning and persuading people to come to Jesus Christ that they will gather and to listen. And so I'm just very blessed to be a part of a, a ministry like this. We, uh, you know, we see people saved on a regular basis. People give up their sin and come to Christ or Christians on a regular basis that will say uh, encouraged by the boldness and, uh, that we had. And, and they will too want to share their faith more regularly. So that's an overall view of what we do. Uh, also, you know, people often ask, why do you do this? And it couldn't be any simpler than the fact that uh, we love God and we love people. Because of that love that we have for God and the love that we have for people, we cannot tolerate people uh, that are living in sin and on their way to hell. Uh, I just cannot sit back in this time and in this generation as the devil is leading thousands and millions of people astray, as the devil is deceiving people by the multitudes through false philosophies and false religions and just uh, wrong beliefs, and thousands and millions of people are on their way to destruction. And as a loving uh, Christian, as one who loves God and loves people, I will not and cannot sit back and do nothing. And so I believe that the Word of God will not return void. I'll publicly declare the truth of God day and night now. Paul, faith, Isaiah, and Jesus. I'll call people to come and put their faith in Jesus Christ. And so that's uh, why I do this. And I believe God is calling this church to get active, calling his church to do something for the sake of the lost and for his glory, uh, that the devil not win. Uh, and when we do battle, the Lord is on our side, and the devil cannot win. And so how we do this, if you uh, are a Christian and you have a burden for the lost, if you have a burden to see souls saved, and you just want to know, how do you do it? it? It's as simple as simply preaching the Bible. That's all that you need, is the book in your hand and the Holy Spirit uh, inside of you, and uh, the love of God in your heart, and that's all you need. We, as we preach, we don't offer people pizza, we don't offer them fancy music, we don't offer them a padded pew or a comfortable couch. All we offer people in the open air is just a, uh, a slab of cement for them to stand upon or to sit upon. And they will listen, as I said earlier, for five hours, sometimes coming five days in a row. And so what you need, if you are seeking to 
preach the gospel, to reach the lost. You just need the love of Christ in your heart, the Holy Spirit inside of you, and the Bible in your hand, and in your heart, and in your mind. And people will come if you preach it. Uh, so we use a method, uh, some call it shock and awe preaching. I like to word it as saying we simply pick our topics wisely. If I go out there into these campuses and preach about something that no one's interested in, uh, if no one's interested in it, it means no one's going to stop. If no one has an opinion on it, it means no one's going to share their opinion. So I go out there and, and I do uh, preach about controversial issues. Uh, abortion, homosexuality, Islam, Hinduism, Mormonism, uh, fornication, drunkenness. Things that are relevant to this generation, relevant to the audience. And because these are controversial issues, uh, they have opinions on it that they want to share. And my target audience, when witnessing and when preaching, are those who don't agree. I don't go out there to preach to those who already agree, but those who don't agree. So there is a bit of disagreement, but that's what we look for. The, those who disagree, that we might reason and persuade with them to uh, believe the Bible, to obey the Bible, uh, and to find eternal life in Jesus Christ. So I just pray and hope that the videos that we make of preaching out on the campuses will uh, encourage you and equip you uh, to go out and to seek and save that which is lost. And if you're, a, if you're an unsaved person and somehow through the internet you just wandered upon uh, this video, I want you to know that God says that He is so holy and so good, He doesn't tolerate any sin. Any sin that you've committed, lying or stealing, uh, drunkenness, fornication, sexual immorality, God has seen it and God has record of it and He won't tolerate it. And the only way you can have your sins forgiven, the only way you can receive the grace and mercy and salvation of God is if you put your faith in Jesus Christ. So I pray that God blesses all of you abundantly. Uh, watch all of our videos. We have a large library and more coming. Uh, pray for our ministries with our uh, the of the Lord that he people soul might be saved. Thank you. So you used to be in a business that tore apart families, killed children, and got people shot. We never killed you children. You are the perfect some example of, the of somebody that is going to make me believe in everything you're saying. But Jesus saved me. Oh, I love God. That's what my shirt says. You know, Jesus saved me. If you were from this area, I might even tell you that you're the reason I ended up in foster care for taking my mom away. If people like you don't need to talk about this kind of stuff, except for the other people that have been doing the exact same thing as you, because it comes across completely Jesus can save even gangster rappers. <laughs> Jesus can save anybody. He died for everybody. So that everybody could have forgiveness in Christ. You need to give up your sin. Come to Jesus Christ to receive eternal life. Uh, anybody can be saved. But not everybody wants to be saved. Some of you guys would rather have sin than to have the grace of God. Some of you would, would rather have a life of, of sex, drugs, money, and power, and wealth, rather than to have eternal life in heaven with God. Now, but, now this is the MTV generation. The BET generation. MTV is lying to many of you. MTV only wants your money. God wants your soul. MTV will promote sin if that's what you want. God promotes holiness even if that's not what you want. God tells you what you need. MTV, BET, Gospel, or the Gangster Rappers, they only tell you what you want. I'm not here to tell you what you want. I'm here to tell you what you need. You need Jesus. You need a new heart. You need God to take your filthy, wretched, dirty heart away and give you a new heart of love. There's a problem if uh, if all week they play music promoting sex, drugs, and violence, and then they allow a preacher on Sunday. Like, no, but I've actually I've heard some good sermons on BET. Uh, you know, even Tupac's song had a song called Tear Mama. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Well, and that was an okay song. Uh, but so much of what they do is, is wicked and evil. And, uh, that's, why, that's why they send people to hell. Huh? But how many of you have to go get college? How many of you have to go get college? You've only had sex with guys, but never girls, or you had sex? Well, stay that way until you uh, find an attractive girl. But uh, that means for rest of you are not virgins. And, uh, so wait, are you trying to tell me how to just go find a girl that looks a lot like a man? You should find a good, attractive lesbian and marry her. Have a gay oh, marriage. Oh my God! You did not. Go, go but you didn't raise your hand. It means you're not a virgin. It means that you committed fornication. 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 I mean, I know. I'm wait, wait, here. Do that again. And the Bible condemns fornication. What? Well, that's the problem on college campuses. People just want to fornicate, fornicate, fornicate. What? You say, you know, now that I'm in college, I'm going to get mine. Uh, you're right. You might get your STDs today. What? Here at STD Junior College, you oh, might get yourself the glorious gonorrhea. You might get yourself the Hello? splendid syphilis. You might get yourself the honorable uh, herpes. Or the awesome AIDS. You don't get AIDS in this year, they try to get it. <laughs> you might get the, uh, HIV that turns into the awesome But you, you're only enjoying the pleasure of sin for a season. When you wake up in hell, it's not not being able to fornicate with. You wake up in hell, there's no point on to me to get joy and pleasure from. Oh, yeah? That's why you need to find your joy and holiness. Masturbation. Masturbation? Oh, shit! Masturbation, yeah. Hold that down. Why, you guys masturbate? All the time! Yeah! Yeah, we're so excited. Just in the food, come out of the seat. Well, the Bible condemns masturbation. Okay. What? Just show me your masturbation. I'm going to see that with you. I'm going to see that with you. Jesus said, Show it to us, don't preach up. I'll get it for you. But Jesus said, If your hand causes you to sin, you can get it for you. But Jesus said, If your right hand, if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off. Oh, shit. 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 Oh, Okay, so you told us that you have sinned before, but you have all of your body parts. Okay, take it metaphorically when it's uh, metaphorical. For lack of a better term, you just damn yourself. You're going to hell. Well, Jesus didn't say you should actually cut off your sins. It was a metaphor. That's considered sodomy. That's sodomy. It's still sodomy. Sodomy is with the ass. But if, uh, if your computer causes you to walk hey, around, you take a sledgehammer to it. I get This what was I can't hear the lyrics. I can't hear the lyrics. I don't know. Shame on you! Shame on you! Shame! Shame! 
shame on you. You're trying to hinder the preaching and uh, promote your rap music.
Yeah, you're better than your suspension. You get drunk, you get uh, high, and then you go to church. That's hypocrisy. Yes, sir? You want me to read a Bible? Uh, I have a Bible heard. Some of you. I don't want no bad news. I'm going to Here it is. John 3, 16. John 3, 17. I'll get to that. John 3, 17. Just one verse. Hold on, just one verse. For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish. Remember it. 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 Why do you condemn it, everybody? Here's verse 18. Why do you condemn it, everybody? For he that believes on him is not condemned. For he that believes is not condemned. He is condemned already. I saw him out. What could he believe? You go to hell. What page did you say you're on? Jesus said, if you don't believe, then you are condemned. And many of you say you believe in God, but to believe also includes to obey. If you believe God punishes your sin, uh, you need to turn. Are you from this? I'm from uh, Longview. Hey, look at you wearing a Bob Marley shirt. What do you do with that tongue? Yes, no, no, I don't want to know. This is not our age. You don't want to know. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. I the only reason you don't want someone to preach against sin is because you love sin. But God says, turn him. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Receive 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 Jesus. Pastor Michael. So why don't we get the pastor to talk? Who are you? And he's going to share uh, some things with you. Go away. Uh, I want to hear what the pastor has to say. Here he is. I, I personally don't believe that any of you want to hear what he has to say because whenever he does say something, many of you interrupt him. I believe like you, I feel, that's what you're doing again. You're interrupting him. We can, we can talk about the things of God. Yeah, that's what's going to be Okay, Some people could hear the way. Words. I know, and there's a way to, there's a way to get. Is it legal for you to sell it? 
Is it legal for you to sell him that drug? When has well, legality really had anything to do with God? It is. If I sold it to someone that used to... You're, you're not breaking the law, but he's breaking God's law. If he's abusing drugs, it's his shit, not yours. That's what I was bringing up about pot. It's that that's man's law. That's not God's law. And man's law is fallible. No, the Bible does command that we be sober. And getting high on the wacky tobacco is not being sober. You did not just say that, dude. Smoking the chiba uh, is not being sober. Just say smoking weed. Pot, smoking, smoking weed. Uh, the Bible commands you to be sober. So that excludes acid, mushrooms, uh, ecstasy, caffeine. Oh, shit, no sugar, no sugar. You can drink caffeine, you can get hyper. But you can be hyper and be sober. It's not altering your your uh, state of consciousness. Oh, you gotta be loving this. What are you taping this for? Yeah, it's better in school. Just so I get it all. Don't be so legalistic to say coffee's a uh, sin. No, don't be, don't be so legalistic there. Uh, but I used to drink a lot of coffee. I, I have a problem with people that get addicted to so it. I think you should only be addicted to Jesus. That's the only addiction you ought to have. Addicted to righteousness and holiness. Oh yeah, this is open. You're addicted to sex. That's not bad. Addicted to sex? Uh, with your wife? It's a good thing. So how do you define a dick? You have sex three times a day and it's not for Call the nymphomaniac. Three times a day with your wife? It's just for getting your rocks off, not for making kids. Well, an addiction is abnormal. Having lots of sex with your wife is normal. What about having sex with your boyfriend? I was waiting on it. I was waiting on it. Uh, if you're a boy, yeah. and you're having sex with a boy, yeah. uh, you're filthy. Can I just get you one good string you're going to have? If you're a girl, having sex with your boyfriend, uh, you're a fornicator. Yeah. Uh, here's some marriage counseling with Brother Jesse. Marriage counseling. Sex ought to be between a man and a woman that are married. Oh, should we get another one? We're getting married in five weeks. No, I'm a virgin. She's a virgin. No STDs in my house. No. No you know that you're not a virgin. No gonorrhea. No genital herpes. No HIV or AIDS. No STDs in my house. I'll marry a virgin. Uh, but if you are, you said you fooled around a lot, though. And, and ladies, you can get a, a virgin from fooling around. And yeah, someone that's never had sex. You can get an STD from a virgin because some children virgin. can be born with it if they're parents. Yep. Yeah. If you lost your virginity, virginity you to a boy, well, you can become a born again virgin. I did. Oh wait. Can you can I become a born again straight man. If you accept, can I buy that? Like, is there a pill I take? It's free, it's called the blood of Jesus Christ. It's called the cross of Jesus. I should have so taken the okay, peace. So since I go to church, but I'm gay, I'm going to hell, even though I've already accepted God as You go to church? Yes. <laughs> oh, 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 I'm not going to church if I'm gay. But, that not but you're gay? Oh, I didn't know that was not allowed. What church do you go to? Do not start with I think there's quite a few people going. Did Christ come into the world to condemn the world? To save it. Thank you. To condemn the world. I was thinking of this guy in on Christ, when he came into the world, did he sit stand on street corners and say that they're going to hell? Or did he eat with them? Did he love them? Did he be their friends? You don't even know these people. You haven't talked to them. Do you, you don't know. People? You don't know them. <laughs> you're not being Jesus on this campus. Jesus is Jesus, but you're not being Jesus. Jesus preached. Right, hold on. Wait, 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 w
Look at that. You can't call Read the Bible. I read it and then say you love them. Even God says that the church is naked and wretched. Does God love the church? Does God love the church of Jesus Christ? Yes or no? Yes. But he says in Revelations that the church that is backslidden is wretched. In Revelations, but he still loves it. So wait, I, God doesn't love me because I'm... Come on here, man, come on. You just said God loves the church, which is built He loves you enough to shed his blood for you. He loves you enough to tell you that your lifestyle so is he loves me enough to tell me that I'm going to hell, but he doesn't love me enough to accept me for who I am. He does not accept you as you are. All right, hold on. On that point, I got you one. You need to be born again. All right. God is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the beginning and the end. That's right. He knows everything. That's right. All right. We were making his image. That's right. Now, if I'm a funny, goofy, pot smoking, sex loving guy, with and I'm made in it. his image, yeah. And he is the Alpha and Omega. What the fuck does he have to be uptight about? You're disgracing his image. You're distorting his image. You're like a mirror that's supposed to perfectly you're reflect his image. Exact same thing. You're but you're pot smoking and, and your fornication is putting a crack in the mirror. So you don't reflect him like you ought to. Why couldn't they be that? But, uh. I listen to him. Alright. Now, there's lots of homosexuals that go to church. There's lots of fornicators that go to church. There's lots of drunkards that go to church. But the Bible calls them hypocrites. If you say that you're a Christian, you need to be like Christ. That's what a Christian is. A Christian is someone that is like Christ. And Christ was not a uh, homosexual. Christ was not a drunkard. Christ was not a liar or a thief or a fornicator, or a pothead. But Jesus was holy, and if you're going to be like Christ, you need to be holy, and only then are you a Christian. Only then. So how are you a re reborn person? Well, the first step, you need to admit your sin, and you've done that. But you need to... I don't think it's a sin. You need to acknowledge that it is a sin. And you need to say uh, yes to God, and no to self. Your flesh, your flesh might want to be a homosexual, but Jesus says, deny yourself. You don't choose what temptations you're tempted with, but you choose what temptations you obey. Okay, so you don't sin, right? Why say love everybody? Well, the Bible says, all have sin. No, it says, you will sin until the day that you die. No, it says, if you confess your sin, his blood will cleanse you. All sin. The Bible says if you know the truth, the truth will set you free. No, you need to think about things. I take every thought captive, and uh, if I do sin, I'll be quick to repent. You need to repent, you need to turn. And if you don't turn, you won't live. I choose not to let sin into my life. We came out here with Oh, I gotta get David. You know, I could become a homosexual if I wanted to. You cannot be a homosexual if you wanted to. You don't have to. Yes, I have free will. If the will is truly free, you can choose to become any type of sin. How the hell do I choose to become straight? Be like I switch the switch in my head and like, oh my god, I love football. Deny yourself. Take okay, up your wait. cross. So as long as I don't have sex with boys, I'm not going to hell. Okay. As long as I don't have sex with boys, I'm not going to hell. As long as you come to Jesus. Okay, so if I don't have sex with boys and I come to Jesus, I'm not going to hell. But what if I'm still gay? What do you mean by like your flesh wants it? Yeah, but I don't do it. Well, my flesh wants to have fornication. But I choose not to fornicate. You know, with, with girls I'm not married to. You need to have, your, your heart needs to be right. Your, your flesh, uh, your flesh might want a lot of sins, but your heart needs to want only to love God. You can't make your heart love no. Love is an action. Love is not a feeling or an emotion, it's an action. Okay, love is not a feeling. So you don't, so you don't feel for your fiance? Oh, I do have action. Oh, hi. Uh, feelings. Uh, but, are you like uh, a robot? I'm confused. That's why people say they fall in love and fall out of love. Because they think it's a feeling. Love feelings is a stay. feeling. Do you not feelings get excited every time you see your fiance? You probably are not really in love. You're just marrying the first girl who said yes. Do you know what the greatest commandment is? The, the 
the greatest commandment is love God. The second is love your neighbor. I got the first one down. Well, if love was only a feeling, how could God command it? It makes sense that God can command it because it's an action. Love is when you choose not to be selfish, but you choose the benefit of the other person. How am I being selfish?
you know, stupid in the head. It takes only a few seconds for the sm smoke to go to your brain. Uh, the Christian Center? Well, uh, make sure you put your cigarette out before you go. What's that? Well, I'm going to help you. Yeah, you know, cigarettes. Cigarettes cause cancer just like sin uh, leads to hell. All sin leads to hell. And uh, I don't want you to have cancer, and I don't want you to go to hell. I do. I was praying for you before I got here. Before I even came, and I'll pray for you tonight. That you, uh, that you turn from sin and start hating sin and start loving God. Do you love Him? Or the Bible tells me so. You got it. But uh, Jesus said if you love Him, you'll keep His commandments. Didn't you say you smoke marijuana? Didn't you say you smoke marijuana? What you say? I said I said I Now, you said you might know the Bible more than me. But the question is, do you obey the Bible? Do I obey it? By the grace of God, I do. When I was a drunkard, I put down the bottle and picked up the Bible. You know, when I was a pot smoker, I sobered up and got serious about God. But, uh, you know, don't, don't be deceived. Sin is deadly. Sin is a killer. Uh, and sin leads to death. So uh, if you guys uh, out on this campus, if you listen to gangster rap music, I want you to know it's promoting sin, it's promoting death, it leads to hell. What do you got on your headphones? Are you listening to rap on your headphones? Rock and roll? Well, the same question. What does it talk about? Rock music. You know, rock music promotes sin, just like rap music promotes sin. Uh, you need to listen to music that promotes holiness and righteousness. That tells you what God wants you to know. Scripture I'd like to share with you guys from the Bible. B I B L E, that's the book for me, the Bible. I would also say it's uh, basic instructions before leaving earth, the Bible. Uh, it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 and 10, it says, Know ye not that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. And it says, be not deceived. Now here's the list. A list of specific people that will go to hell instead of going to heaven. And the first group of people on the list, it says, are the fornicators. Fornicator, one who has uh, premarital sex. I wonder, you know, what percentage of this campus do you think is involved in fornication, in premarital sex? You think maybe 30% of the students here at Kilgore Junior College, you think 30% might be involved in premarital sex? I think it might be a bit higher. But I want you to know if you're involved in fornication, uh, it is a sin. It's a deadly sin. The wages of sin is death. And despite what MTV and Planned Parenthood try to tell you, a condom does not make it safe. A condom never, never has, never will make a fornication safe. I don't care uh, what the Trojan company will try to tell you. The only safe sex is the kind of sex that's in the will of God, 
and that's between a married couple. So if you're involved in fornication out here, I want you to know you're, you're in trouble with God, you're angering God, you're heading for hell, you're going to burn unless you repent, put your faith in Christ. The next, it says, on the list of people that don't go to heaven, it says, are the idolaters. An idolater is someone who worships a false god. And if it's true that only the God of the Bible is the true and only living God, then it means all other religions and all other gods are false and uh, are idols. And anyone that's not a Christian yet worships something, then they are an idol worshiper. That would include the Hindus, and the Buddhists, and the Muslims, and uh, you know Judaism that rejects Jesus Christ. You know, all these religions are wrong uh, if they're not worshiping the one and only true God, which is Jesus Christ. The next on the list are the adulterers. All over Texas you have these adult shops. You have these adult films. And uh, they try to make you feel special and privileged uh, that you can go to these uh, shops and watch these films. Now that you're an adult, you're over 18 years old. But uh, there's no age limit for sin. Uh, sin is off limits for all ages, uh, according to God. It says adulterers don't go to heaven. Jesus said if you look with lust, you commit adultery in your heart. But I wonder how many of you here at Kilgore, uh, some of you men, how many of you look at women with lust? The girls wearing the short shorts and the tight shirts. And uh, they're walking through the campus, and you have a lustful eye, a sinful eye. Jesus says it's adultery, it makes you an adulterer, makes you a hell-bound sinner in need of Jesus Christ. So, if any of you college boys look at pornography, dirty magazines, Jesus says it's sin in your heart, you know it's sin, and it's a sin that God will punish, it's a sin that you need Jesus to forgive. But the next on the list of people that don't go to heaven, it says are the homosexuals. That's what the Bible says. The homosexuals will not go to heaven, they go to hell because they're living in rebellion against nature and against God. But it's just common knowledge a lot of college students today are homosexuals. There might even be a, a few homosexuals on this very campus. It's true. There, there might be a few uh, of them here in Kilgore. Uh, but if you're, if you're having a perverted sex with a man and a man, or even a woman and a woman, you know, they do that today. There's women who have sex with women. Uh, there's guys who, who get a kick out of that. Are you laughing? Is that you? Am I, am I maybe uh, pointing uh, and pressing on your sin? Do you have a, a thing for lesbians? I want you to know it's sin. It's, it's gross. It should make you sick. Uh, God commands that you hate sin. That you never love it. That you never delight in it. You never take pleasure in it. God commands that you hate it because He hates it. He hates sin. He hates especially homosexuality and lesbianism. It's gross. It's un unnatural. The Bible says they're deserving of death. So if you're homosexual, you need Jesus to set you free. If you're homosexual, you need the blood of Jesus to make you straight. In the blood of Jesus, He can do that. There's freedom in Jesus. There's forgiveness in Jesus. There's a new birth and a
having a mighty change in Jesus. Next on the list, it says our uh, the sodomites. Certainly, uh, you know, the average homosexual is a sodomite. Uh, one who sodomizes another. Of course, men and women do that too. It's a perversion. The Bible talks about it. That's why I'll talk about it. The Bible didn't say anything about it. I wouldn't say anything. The Bible says sodomy. The sodomites uh, will not inherit the kingdom of God. They need Jesus. They need to be born again. The list goes on. The thieves, the covetous, the drunkards, those who get drunk, Budweiser, Miller, High Life, and uh, Coors. Even on your uh, strong drink, your alcohol, if you drink Hennessy, uh, those sort of, in your 40s, 30 cases and six packs, they even have 64s. The Bible says you're a drunkard. Uh, it doesn't say you're an alcoholic. It doesn't say you, uh, it says you're a wine bibber, a drunkard, a sinner. And you need Jesus Christ. Twenty-one. That's right. Uh, how old are you? Eighteen. So you're not even legally allowed to drink. That's... Yeah, I told you I didn't drink. I know. I remember. Yeah. I wasn't trying to do anything. When you came, it's like you just stopped. Like you see the black, black crowd. I'm just saying what it is. And but wise towards righteousness. But the way you came out, you made everybody feel like you know what I'm saying they was ain't doing the right thing. Well, uh, a lot of people here on this campus are not doing the right thing. Uh, there are people on this campus that listen to gangster rap. Where are you from, sir? Originally Connecticut. <laughs> yeah, I used to listen to gangster rap. Uh, Tupac and Biggie Smalls and Nas and Noriega, those sort of guys. We in Noriega. He you know it. Well, these guys uh, just, you know, added fuel to the flame of the life of my sin. You know, they just promoted it, glorified it, talked about it all the time. You used to smoke weed too? Uh, I used to be a, a drug dealer. Oh, you never smoked? Uh, I used to smoke it. What's up, baby? Yeah. Get money, You know, I used to smoke uh, lunch. Like the Garcia of Green Leaves and the, the Philly Blunts, the Dutch Masters. I used to smoke blunts and uh, even used to smoke joints and pipes and bongs and bubblers. Those sort of things. But it's all sin. It's, it's only pleasurable for a season. What's that? A bubbler is a pipe and a bong uh, all in one. It's, it's, it's not as big as a bong. Uh, but it's not as small as a pipe. It's like a Sherlock Holmes water pipe. It's called a bubbler. And uh, yeah, sin is pleasurable for a season. I mean, uh, getting high is a pleasurable feeling. Uh, getting drunk is a pleasurable feeling. Having premarital sex is a pleasurable feeling. But it's only for a season. And when the season of your life is over, and you wind up in hell because you smoked pot and got drunk and had premarital sex, when you wake up in hell, uh, the season is over.
and it's just eternity of burning forever and ever 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 in hell you burn forever it never ends the pleasure never comes back the misery never leaves you never smile again you never laugh again you never have joy again in hell it's misery for your sin God doesn't want you to go to hell. He wants you to come to Jesus, find forgiveness. Come to Jesus, give up your sin, your debauchery. Be regenerated. Be uh, a repentant sinner. Find life, eternal life in Jesus Christ. And you know how long eternal life is? Forever and ever 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 and ever. Eternal life in Jesus is forever. Does your shirt say bong? Is that a, is that a Billy Bong shirt or are you promoting the marijuana? Billy Bong? You, you don't smoke bongs, do you? Hey, you don't have to puff on a bong, right? Pipes? You puff on your pipes? Well, then I came to the right place. Fee, fi, fo, fum, I smell the blood of a wicked one. A pot smoker. Is that why you wear a green shirt? You love pot so much, you represent its colors. What's that? I'm a hypocrite? Prove it. Prove it. You just judged me. You I've been looking for one to come out here to do it. I'm going to lunch out there. Yeah. But you, uh, you know, I, I believe in judging because the Bible says when you judge, yeah. judge yeah. righteously. Yeah. That's what Tupac said. That's not in the Bible. Tupac said that. Jesus, Jesus never taught that. The Bible never taught that. But you said I'm a hypocrite, so you judged me. I believe in judging, because the Bible says you should. Well, what sin do you accuse me of? What sin do you... Judging is a sin? Are you saying I cannot say that sin is wrong without sinning? I can't say that the wages of sin is death without sinning? I can't say that sin leads to hell? Without sinning? Sounds kind of foolish to me. You know, the only people who don't want us to judge are people that have sin in their life. Hey, wow. Well, uh, by the grace of God, I'm a new person. You're a new person. Every day. Yeah. Every day I'm a new person? Never seen, never oh, seen. no. Yeah. I said I was a drug dealer and a pot smoker before. Wait. But, uh... Through the grace of God, I became a new person. Uh, that's what you need. You need Jesus to make you a new person. What? I said, you need Jesus to make you a new person. Does Jesus tell you to smoke your pot? Jesus told you it's okay to smoke pot? You said you smoke pipes instead of bombs. I remember. What's that? Is that a metaphor? Oh, okay. So you don't smoke pot? Possibly do? Well, the Bible calls it sorcery. And sorcerers go to hell. Right? Lord of the Rings? Lord of the Rings? Yeah. And they have a wizard. Source. But yeah, pot smoking, mushrooms, acid. These things are demonic. Yeah. Well, it's all summed up in principle when it condemns sorcery. Sorcery in the Greek, the word is pharmaceutica. You know, you know what pharmaceutica would mean? It means that. 
No, you're just a tool of the devil. Oh, really? What are you saying? If you sell drugs, you're a puppet of the devil. If I help someone with cancer relieve pain, then I'm a devil, right? Oh, well, now you're changing it a bit. Uh, you're adding a bit more detail. Uh, if, if you're a, a, an illegal drug dealer, uh, you're a hellbound sinner. But if you are a... Hurting the society, uh, hurting his family, you know, hurting the future generation, a drug dealer doesn't help anybody. Ultimately, not even himself, because he goes to hell. At the end of his life, he doesn't find Jesus. He doesn't repent. Believe. But yeah, I mean, all these guys that we glorify, uh, Tupac, Biggie Small, uh, even the guys that are still alive, Eminem, 50 Cent, uh, these guys, Tupac and Biggie went to hell if they didn't repent. Eminem and 50 Cent are on their way to hell if they didn't repent. Come to Jesus. What about the millionaire? Uh, who? The millionaire. Who's that? What about the Grand Zero? I don't know these guys. Are these rappers? Yep. Are they in uh, the G unit? We can yep. G -unit. Yeah. Yeah. No. 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 Yeah. All gangster rappers are in trouble with God. Stop, guys. What's that? But they're not gangsters. Well, what kind of rappers are they? Neo. Right? Like, gospel rappers are okay. Uh, God's gospel rappers are okay if they're rapping about Jesus, but if they're rapping about drugs, violence, rape, and murder, and uh, stealing cars, and you know, killing their girlfriends, and raping their mothers. I've never heard of a uh, rapper uh, rap about raping their mothers. Have you ever heard Eminem? Eminem does. Uh, says, bend over and take it uh, like a slut. says, okay, mom, and then it's out. Breaking his own mother. And he gets in the cover of the, uh, what's that? Yes, to. But I was a sinner. I haven't heard him for years. But I guess. Uh, well, you know, a guy driving by, his place is blaring it, I hear a little bit. But I mean, I mean, I, I haven't sat down to intentionally listen to a sinner like Eminem. You uh, knew the exact words. Yeah, if you know the exact words, you have to listen to it. Well, I know the words because I used to listen to it. I used to listen to DMX, too. DMX is a sinner just like all the rest of them. Uh, he's even worse. DMX is a hypocrite. Because he will uh, dedicate one song to God after 12 tracks of, uh, of raping your daughter and stealing your car and beating you up. And then he'll dedicate the last song to God. DMX is a hypocrite. Uh, and then he, he has the audacity to thank God for his ability and opportunity hey, to rap. What? What's that? He thanks God for the ability God did give him. Yeah, but he's misusing it, and he's perverting it. You know, we have the ability... Yeah, he needs to thank God for the ability, but he thanks God for the opportunity. Uh, and so God opened up the doors for him to make these uh, sin-promoting CDs. And uh, I'd rather have a bag of M&M's than to listen to M&M. I wouldn't... Pay 50 cents for a 50 cent CD. What's that? I don't want an M. You can give it to me and I'll burn it. Burn it? Yeah. Like on the computer? Don't make sense. No, I'll physically burn the CD before it causes anyone to burn in hell. Better to burn a CD than to burn in hell. Sin always leads to death and hell. But Jesus what leads to life. What's that? What kind of preacher are you? 
What kind of preacher? Oh, I'm just a born again Bible believing. Evangelistic, I'm guessing. Yeah, evangelistic. Uh, evangelical, we could say. Some would say Pentecostal. Uh, but I, yeah, some do. Some do. It's true. But the fear of God's the beginning of wisdom. Hey, guess what? What's that? If you put the fear of God, most people don't care. Well, do you, do you not fear God? Everybody fears God. But if you make them fear God more than once in God, then what's the use? And they just don't care. Well, you ought to fear God out of love. Not yeah, a, but not out of scare. Well, there is a, you know, fear is fear. Whether we, and the Bible does say fear God. Because of who he is. <laughs> You know, Jesus Christ taught about the fear of God. Yeah. He said, uh, don't fear man who can only kill your body, but fear him who can kill body and soul in hell. Jesus said, fear him, because he can destroy your body in hell. Uh, the, problem with, uh, you know, like, the problem with a lot of students on this campus is that they don't fear God. Hey, I have a question. Earlier you said I smoked a little bit of green turtle. No, you said you smoked pipes. I said, are you wearing a green shirt? Because you're just liking to represent uh, so the colors of marijuana. Up. No, I was inquiring. Uh, inquiring is, is different. I ask questions. I only know what you tell me. You said you smoked pipes. I believed you. You know, I, I take you at your word sometimes. You know, I respect you enough to think uh, you might be honest occasionally. But, uh... Yeah, hell is a very real place. But most people try to deny it and they live as though it didn't exist. You know, people, they get drunk, they smoke pot, they have premarital sex, they look at pornography, they lie and cheat on their tests, they steal and download music they didn't buy, and they live as though God's not going to punish sin. They live as though there is no hell. And there's nothing more foolish than that, to deny God. Nothing's more foolish than that. You know why? Why? Because it's easier to sin. Easy? It's always easier to tell a lie than to be honest. It's uh, always easier uh, to have premarital sex than to wait until marriage. Sin is always Are easier. Are you a virgin? But I am a virgin. Are you lying? I'm getting married in five weeks. She's a virgin too. And uh, the two shall become one, the Bible says. But you need to pick up your cross, deny yourself, and follow Jesus. Deny the pleasure of your flesh. Your flesh wants to have sex with every girl that walks by. Because uh, your flesh, uh, if it's not controlled, hey, is evil. Sex with every girl that walks by. What's that? Who wants to have sex with every girl that walks by? Well, maybe I was, uh, maybe I was exaggerating a bit. Um, but the point is, the flesh doesn't care about morality. The point is, the flesh doesn't want to be controlled. But if, uh, if you're going to do what God wants, you need to live by the Spirit of God. Deny your, fe your flesh, deny its, its uh, desires until the proper time. And, uh, and do what is right because it is right. Do what is moral because God says so. And anything else is sin. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you, since you're evangelistic, most people in America, since we live by a freeway, we don't like people coming and judging us for who we are or what we do. We like people to, I mean, if you come to us and you're like, oh man, you know, you should be doing this and this and you help me out so much instead of being like, oh, you're going to hell, you stupid bastard. I mean, you know, seriously, someone says that to me, I'd rather punch him. But, uh... Have you, during our conversation, have you ever wanted to punch me? <laughs> yes. <laughs> hey. Well, that's how I know you don't have the love of God in your heart. The love of God compels me to come out here. But it's the hatred and the love of sin in your heart that makes you want to punch preachers. I guess what? What's that? No, that's not it. Well, why, why do you think you wanted to punch a preacher? <laughs> I'm telling you that... Uh, what God would tell you if He were here? You think? You think? According to the Scriptures, or to the Bible, He said in John 7, 7, The world hates me, because I tell it that its works are evil. If you were in the days of Jesus, you might have crucified Him. You would have done more than punch Him for telling that your works are evil. I don't punch people that have provided miracles. 
Jesus is the Jewish Messiah. So what are you? What's your religion? I'm a Christian. Evangelist. I'm a Gentile Christian. A Gentile? Gentile. Isn't that what a Christian is? Well, no, you could be a, a Jew for Jesus. A Messianic Jew. I break for Jesus. In fact, all true Jews are Jews for Jesus. Uh, the New Testament is the fulfillment of the Old Testament. Jesus is the Jewish Messiah. And, uh, you know, it was only because the nation of Israel was cut off that Gentiles were grafted in. But it's true. The Jews need Jesus. Hey, wait, I'm going to hell because of the because my parents are interracial, because I smoke, I've smoked pot, interracial because I look at up. porn, <laughs> because I'm in college, so it's pretty, I'm pretty much college shot. College is like the porn's not. What's wrong with porn? Porn? Uh, you mean these adult films? Oh, uh, yeah. The problem is they forgot three little letters. You know what those letters are? E-R-Y. What does that spell? Adultery. It's not an adult film. It's, it's an adultery film. Jesus said, if you look with lust, you're an adulterer in your heart. So have you never looked at a girl and been like, she's hot? Oh, I, I used to do more than that. Oh, uh, I used to be a virgin. I used to fool around, but I'm still a virgin. Oh, oh, no, you're not a virgin. You're not a virgin if you fool around. But, uh, you're hypocritical. You're sitting here judging us. Well, when you mess around with probably more people than we even know. I used to be a drug dealer. I, I probably sinned more than many of you combined. I'm a drug dealer. I used to rob. What's that? So you're a drug dealer? You are? Good. Uh, I came to talk to you. Uh, stop your selfish living. If you're sending other people to hell, you're sending yourself to hell. You need Jesus. I'm still an illegal drugs. You're not an illegal drug dealer? I'm I'm tired of your word games. Playing word games all day. But all sin leads to hell. I used to sin all the time. Jesus set me free. I live for him. I love him. I'm saved by the cross. I'm saved by his blood. You never sin anymore? Uh, if I do, it's the exception and not the rule. There's exceptions. If I do, it's uh, it's abnormal and not normal. Uh, no. The general rule of my life is that of love. And uh, because I love God, I choose to keep his commandments. So you can't love God and be gay? No, you have to be selfish to be gay. So Why am I selfish to be gay? Because uh, God says, if you love him, you'll keep his commandments. And he okay. says, you shall not love him. I really man. thought there was only ten commandments. What's that? Is there ten commandments or am I mistaken? Well, the ten, yes or no, how many the ten commandments. There's ten, right? And which number of commandments says, don't be gay? The greatest commandment. I don't see it. What number is it? Can you let me know? The so greatest it commandment up is love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. That includes loving God with your body. But you're not only, uh, you were made in the image of God. So you're disgracing God's image. And you're God disgracing your own image body. wouldn't even make me straight if I was going to hell. I you say you're born that way? Yeah. Prove it. What, what do you want? Do ah, you want oh, me to go back in history and come out of the womb saying I love boys? What? I don't, I'm not, I'm well, not I could prove it, but uh, my proof would be the proof that you recognize. Awesome. Because uh, all of us recognize different proofs. So you, so. Let me, let me explain, because I can very easily prove that not a single person was ever born gay. Okay, go ever. ahead. Well, the way that we determine reality is not by our own understanding or our own experience. The only true way to understand reality is to ask the one who made reality, which is God. Because God says homosexuals choose to turn the truth of God into a lie. They choose to do what is vile and a perverse. Uh, because God says it's a choice, uh, that means it is a choice. So what about girls who have anal sex? Are they going to hell? It's sodomy. It's sick. Why is that sick? If there's any girls in this campus, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Do you what? You're married. It's huh? perverse. Even it's within it. marriage, it ought to be a holy marriage. Hey, guess what? I'm pretty sure you can do anything to anybody's body when you're married. Yeah, well, tell that to God who says otherwise.
He came to the people in a way that people would go on by themselves. And he healed people on the spot. Where do you people need to stop? Where's your pain? How many people have been saved? How many people have been saved this week? How many people have been like the Christ this week? No man. How many people have been like the Christ? How many people have given their life to Christ? What's that? This man says on six forty four. I'm glad you know, I'm really glad you know. dynamic duel. <laughs> like we're sitting there watching my participant on my own salvation. <laughs> but then you got to work it out. Right. Look, man. But the thing about Thank it you. is, when we don't look go at the difference between what the hands of the living God, a fearful thing. And the Bible says every idle word we utter, we're going to give an account of on the judgment. Every idle word. <laughs> <laughs> That's a metaphor for a description of the abode of those who are in fact a sin. That's not my Think about this. Oh my God, I found Jesus! Oh my God, I found Jesus! Remember the big ball of fire? <laughs> Twin Towers, it was so hot in the Twin Towers, the people jumped out of what, 80 stories to certain death to escape it. But there'll be no escape to the fire. No escape to the fire. Nobody He could have sat there waiting when he rather decided to go with take a They were trying this only to another death. But no, it, and so there was no so escape no from death. There was escape from <laughs> pain. So and uh, there'll be no escape. Uh, but you can escape the plane. If you forsake your sin and turn to Jesus. <laughs> but Let you God go. continue to sin. Go to church and worship the Lord. That's hypocrisy. <laughs> You're just down the bar and getting wasted. Getting stoned and humping some sorority girl tonight. <laughs> well, right, I guess. Sort of relaxed. This girl, earlier in the day, invited, asked one of the preachers to kiss her buttocks. And <laughs> <laughs> some strange man to kiss her buttocks. I that That's a nice girl. That was a metaphor. That was probably, I didn't want to go to hell because he told me he's not going there, so I gave him an alternative action. Oh, I took that literally. I thought oh, you I'm really so, no, him. I, I oh, thanks. Yeah, good. Great intelligence to understand sarcasm. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's pretty sarcastic, too. Was it worth it? So, yeah. I'm tell you something, guys. So, you're going to be accountable for what we've uh, taught you uh, this week. That's right. I'm accountable for uh, everything I teach. That's right. And but, you know, we teachers are more accountable, according to the book of James, we teachers are accountable. That's right. What's the nature you keep steering on a daily basis? Appreciate that. What's that? Just listen to hatred you can spew on a daily basis, judgmental, fire, and brimstone, curse, and sin, and You can't be from your descent. you got to repent. There's another black person who's listening. And not all black people speak jive. And not all black people speak jive either. I know a lot of white people that speak jive in this rap and so on. Yeah, of course. We want to be more. Uh, 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 if you don't look at Jesus' saying, most of them are just quotations out of the Old Testament. So did you sell For instance, a man came to Jesus and asked, What is the greatest gift? And Jesus answered, the... You say most of them. I don't know what people. Yeah. Most of them come from probably Psalms and Isaiah more than anything. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
we got him from the from the uh, from the uh, from the, uh, the law and actually a lot of Paul, Peter was, was, the apostles quoted uh, from the Old Testament more than they quoted from Jesus. This is that says all scriptures by inspiration of God. It's talking about the Old Testament. So yes, I talk about the Old Testament. Uh, I follow, follow all the Torah, follow the ceremonial law, the right. All of God's commandments are summed up in one word. See, if you love what happened about like all the America throughout history before Columbus came over? How come God never chose to like, show him something that you don't know that he does? No, but more like the Greeks and the Romans, they had multiple just murdered you anyway. Well, see, God, God, uh, uh, that I said, these are one of the events. God revealed himself initially to the Jewish nation, to the people. Now you'll find, even during the height of the Roman Empire and the Greek Empire, Jews were dispersed throughout all the nations of the earth. And uh, they, they, they had the law, they gave the law to the Greeks, they generally rejected some lead, uh, and they gave the law to the and I think which throughout the world in order to, to teach the nations the truth of God. After Asia, with all the We're all going to lose a die. Well, here's, here's a question I want to ask. What is going to happen after you die? Hopefully go to heaven. Hopefully go to heaven? But you're not really sure? Yeah, you're going to be judged. When you die, you're going to be judged. All right, Kelly. Hopefully you'll go to heaven. You can adjust the microphone if you need to. All right, so hopefully you'll go to heaven. Do, do you know how to, how to know if when you die you go to heaven or not? He said it be bad. That's good. That's good. Uh, but th th there's a word uh, which isn't very uh, understood today, which is called repentance. What's repentance mean, Scott? What does it mean? You confess it. You give it up. You give it up. Everything that that's not your way. You just give it back to the Lord. You sacrifice it. Uh, repentance, a lot of people think repentance is simply like asking God for forgiveness. A lot of people, uh, especially in our own day, think repentance is saying, Oh God, I did something wrong, I'm really sorry, please forgive me. But it, that, that's actually not true. That's actually not true at all. Repentance is turning away from sin. Uh, do you know what sin is? It's, it's, it's everyday thing from uh, it's, it's like a Commandments, the Ten Commandments. Would you tell me that yet yeah, those it's God's law? No? I have ever Yeah, so so that make you. A sin, but well, a lot Alright, I've you only. Yeah. Uh, and so what does that make you? A thief. A thief. Alright, Jesus said if you look at a woman with lust, you commit adultery in your heart. Have you ever looked at a woman with lust? Now yeah. uh, it looks like your friend has too. He got excited at this question. Yeah. That's your brother, alright. Alright. So you lied, you stole, and you hooked with lust. Here's another question. Out here tonight, we got bars, we got clubs, a few restaurants, we got almost naked women. Kelly, what are you doing out here tonight? What came out to have a good time and walk around? To have a good time and walk around. Well, what's a good time for you? Chilling with my friend. Just chilling with your brother. Yeah. All right. What do you think the majority of the people out here doing? Good to everybody. A little bit of everything, right. Do you think coming out here and hanging out is a good time? No. No? Uh, so this is not your ideal uh, Saturday night. This isn't really a good time for you, right? No, not really. Well, it sounds like you should go home, Kelly. I mean, if you're here to have a good time, but yet this isn't a, a place you admitted to have a good time, it's, yeah, you should go home, Kelly.
Alright, you know what I'm saying? It's your boy Big Dude. So, shout out to Top Tips and Rivers, you know what I'm saying? We live in the front, baby. You know what I'm saying? The king is back, baby. Understand me, you know what I'm saying? It's going down. Hey, it's going down in deep Ellen, baby. Shout out to Wes Dallas, South Dallas, Oak Cliff, East Dallas, West Dallas, the North Side. Shout out to everybody, you hear me? Dallas, Texas on the rise, you hear me? You know what I'm saying? We united as we stand, baby. And that's what that is. Top Tips and Rivers, baby. They call me the dudes. Over that, leave it. All right, Kelly. Yeah. If you're out here to have a good time, but you admit this isn't the place to have a good time, it seems like you should go home. Yeah. All right. When we die, I think it was your brother who said, or someone said, when we die, we're judged. Well, on Judgment Day, all these people that we see, those long lines of people waiting to get into the club, all the people that you see, I don't know if you go to school or college, I don't know, or the people you work with, all the people that you've ever encountered in your life, all the people that you're ever going to encounter in your life will stand there and judge the thing. And you yourself will have to give an account to God. And you'll even have to give an account for the nut tonight. You're going to have to answer so how you spent your time, how you spent your life, what it is you, you came out here to do. I don't really know what you came out here to do. You said you came out of here to have fun. I don't know what you consider to be fun. But God knows. And on that day, on Judgment Day, God's going to take a look at your life. He's going to see everything that you've ever done. Do you ever fear about that day? Do you have any worries about that day? I mean, when you, when you tell God everything, the God who knows everything, and you give an account to Him? He already knows. He already knows. I, I fear God. You fear God. Is, you should be feared. I mean, God's all-powerful, all-knowing, all-righteous, all-holy. Have you ever read through the Bible? Yeah, I'm reading through it right now. I'm reading through it right now. Well, in, in Revelation 21, 8, it says this. It says, all liars, all thieves, all adulterers, all murderers, all sorcerers shall have their part in the lake of birds with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Do you believe in hell? No. Do you believe in hell? All right. Since you've admitted to lying, you've admitted to stealing, you, you, you've admitted to, to, to commit adultery, the fact that God said... People, people, but it's the same things you thought. God's gonna cast hell. Does that worry you? No. It doesn't worry you. Well, tell me why. Because I'm not a leader. I'm not a leader. You're getting your life out. Well, that's just that I'm out of your feet. That well, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. While we were liars, thieves, adulterers, and, and because God is holy, He must punish sin. And that there is a hell, there is a heaven, and there is a judgment day.
in honesty and say, God, I've sinned against you. I know the things I've done are wrong. And because we live in the day of grace, God, because of what Jesus Christ did, can forgive us. Because he took our punishment, he took our shame, he took, he took our execution. The Bible says the wage of sin is death. If you sin against God, if you sin against God, just why? The Bible says you deserve to die. And because we deserve to be executed, Jesus Christ came and he was executed for me and he was executed for you. So that we can receive everlasting life.